right, the uh, purpose of this video is to describe the components of the 3M Breathe Easy powered air purifying respirator for use in first receiver decon operations. The components of the 3M Breathe Easy PAPR, P powered air purifying respirator, are the filter cartridges, the airflow meter, the included, in this case, lithium ion battery, the Breathe Easy motor, AKA blower motor, the actual hood, and the hose and cover for the hose. So what I'm gonna describe now are how to assemble, inspect, and make sure that this component is ready for use in a first receiver decon operation. One of the first things that we ask or we show is uh, we show the filters, inspecting the filters out of the uh, bag include uh, removable tabs, you wanna save these for later, uh, for storage, proper storage, and one of the things I look for on these filter cartridges, and these are C. Bernie Papper Cap one specific to first receiver decon operation cartridges. They look for an expiration date, making sure they're still serviceable. And as I remove the caps that come with the filters, I'm looking for any cracks or any sort of deformities in the threads to make sure that I can put these on the blower motor when I want to assemble. In this case, you'll notice that the expiration dates are imprinted on the body of the filter. If you forget to remove these caps, you'll know later when we get into the flow test. Next component of the assembly, I wanna make sure I have a flow meter. I'm gonna be using this to test the power of the blower unit to ensure that it's operational for conducting air operations while the hood is being worn. At this time, I'm gonna spend a few seconds to inspect my blower motor. I'm looking for any sort of cracks, any sort of tears or uh, deformities in the cords, ensuring that the prongs on the cord are, are set. I'm inspecting the receptacles for the filter cartridges to ensure that the rubber seal or O-ring inside is present in some cases during storage, these may come out. Without them, you could compromise the filter unit with water getting inside the filter blower motor. Okay, so the uh, next part of the process would be to assemble the filter cartridges onto the blower motor. It's pretty much straightforward assembly onto the blower motor carefully threading, not over tightening, just nice and snug. Repeat the process for each cartridge. Once all three cartridges are in place, I'm gonna set that blower motor down. I'm gonna connect my battery and get ready for an airflow test. As I mentioned, the prongs after you've inspected them, you're ready to put the prongs inside. They only go into the battery one way. Pretty easy to connect that. There's a flat spot, it lines up so the battery can connect directly to the prongs. Do a quick test of your uh, battery by in clicking on the motor, or clicking on the switch rather. You can visibly feel, or you can feel the air coming out of the blower motor and you can hear it, that's a good test. One of the other things you're looking for on the actual battery, uh, depending on how long it's been sitting, you, uh, you may have an expired battery. So it's always great to check the, the expiration date on the battery itself. This one, uh, we're good till 2024, 20, so it's a good battery. I wanna do a flow test on the blower motor. I'm gonna use my flow meter. Uh, you wanna follow the arrows for the flow test. Uh, arrows indicating up, of course. Slide that. Flow me, oh, sorry, had it upside down. It only goes in one way. One side is smaller than the other. It'll slide right inside that little blower receptacle. Slide it in, Air, airflow arrow is pointing up. Per the manufacturer's instructions, you're looking for six CFMs of airflow. Quick airflow test, raise the blower motor up so you've got clean access to each filter cartridge. Engage the battery. 
This is evidence of a good test. Complete the test, remove the valve, air, or remove the airflow cart, uh, tester from the valve. Go ahead and leave your battery motor connected for, uh, for later assembly of the, of the hood. I'm gonna concentrate on the hood now. I'm gonna do a visual inspection of the hood. The visual inspection of the hood includes uh, a look at the face shield. These should be stored in a way that those, so there's no deformities on the hood. You want, to, you want to look for any kind of cracks, any kind of seams. You don't want any seams that are going to crease the hood or, or creases that may impair your vision. You want to also inspect the seams of the hood. You don't want to have any rips, any tears, any seams that may be coming apart. On the hood itself, you have an exhalation valve. On the exhalation valve, inside the exhalation valve, and you can gain access to that by simply removing the exhalation, exhalation cover, placing it down, looking at the inside of the cover, there's a rubber flat exhalation check valve inside there. It's very, uh, uh, um, very, very important to ensure that that valve is in place and it's flat without it. Airflow won't properly move through and out of the mask, and you'll steam up, and, and it, won't, it won't be a good day. Remember to place the exhalation valve back onto the mask, and it's important to make sure it fully clicks on. And don't just listen for the click, but go ahead and inspect and make sure that it's fully seated, and then you can move on with your further inspection. Looking at the hood, again, you're looking at the seams to make sure that there's no rips, there's, there's no tears, there's no separation. All throughout the, the outer skin of the 3M Breathe Easy hood, and then the inner skin of the 3M Breezy hood, ensuring it's intact. The next thing you want to get towards is exposing the receptacle for the hose white hard plastic receptacle that we're going to come back to in just a second. I'll leave that right there. Next part of the process of our equipment inspection would be checking out our hose. So two different ends of the hose obviously. One comes equipped with a white plastic rigid connecting um, mechanism or connect connector rather. Uh, you want to ensure that there's a uh, visible clamp that's secured holding that rubber onto the clamp without it it's not serviceable you're looking for any sort of deformities any cracks in the white receptacle so that make to make sure that that can click into that uh, hood properly the other end of the hose is going to go onto the uh, on the uh, blower motor and there's a, a simple hose clamp that'll keep that secure before we apply the hose we're going to stretch the hose out we're going to do our best in good lighting to look for any cuts, any cracks, any creases. This thing needs to be intact in order to have proper airflow. Another component of the unit is the cover for the hose. The cover for the hose is important to protect the hose from any contact with sharp objects to ensure you have proper air into the hood from the blower. slide the hose into the sleeve okay that's a great de demonstration of having this loose because you need this hose end loose in order to gain access to the uh, blower motor inserting the blower uh, inserting the hose onto the blower motor slide the hose over the receptacle, snugging it down, ensuring that your hose clamp is pointed towards the back for easy access to snug, not over tighten, the hose clamp so that that's properly seated for use later. The other end of the hose as mentioned earlier, is the, rub, is the hard plastic white connection. White connection into the receptacle of the hood, line it up, click it in, rotate it around, snug it back to make sure it's nice and tight. At this time, it's a great opportunity to also inspect 
for any rips, tears, or cuts in the hose connection area. At this point, you've got an assembled Papper powered air purifying respirator breathe easy unit ready for use.